guys. Uh, my name is Eduardo. I'm from Brazil. Uh, alongside my friend Rodrigo, we did uh, this research on uh, State uh, Brick Brothers, and uh, sadly he couldn't be here today. Uh, we actually are independent researchers, so we couldn't afford to be both of us here. So I'm gonna do my best to replace him. Okay. The idea here is to talk about a uh, nation state uh, activity online and not focusing so much on huge big brothers, but the little ones also. Uh, we have uh, four uh, steps for our agenda, some intro and basic concepts, the major sources that we used to our research, and the outcomes of the analysis and the conclusion and final remarks regarding the subject. Okay. The idea we borrow here from the 16th uh, philosopher, English philosopher Thomas Hobbes, the idea that basically human beings cannot work together. Uh, he wasn't very, very optimistic. Uh, he considered that we would uh, almost all the time resort to some sort of state of nature and civil war, which is you know, 16th century philosophy. Uh, if you think about the internet, it's a pretty good example of the exactly the opposite. People gather around uh, a common idea without a top-down authority, without someone saying how it should be. So consensus may took a while, but it eventually uh, emerges. So this idea is largely being used when politicians try to increase state power. The idea that threats are too big, we have terrorism, we have cybercrime, we have espionage. So we need to give power to someone, to an authority. Uh, often they're politicians, they're so they want the increased state power. And through our research, we actually found out quite the opposite. The most effective and most uh, active actor around cyberspace is actually states doing things, attacking not only other states, but major uh, attacks against civil society and political groups. So it's one of the, the, the conclusions of our research, and I hope uh, we can show you some evidence of that. Uh, some three concepts, these are not academical ones, that we use to look for and state misbehavior, state big brotherish activity, uh, espionage, surveillance, uh, eavesdropping, censorship. Uh, you might find better concepts than the ones that we are listing here, but they were the ideas to which we went looking for evidence uh, concerning state, nation state activity online. Well, the main sources uh, that we went for are five. Uh, first, APT reports. Uh, those are the reports and blog posts from private vendors, NGOs, uh, CSERTs, universities. We have some studies from EFF, from Citizen Lab from Toronto, some certs from Japan, United States. So it's a, it's a pretty, pretty wide material, over 750 of them. Uh, it's pretty Western biased, so 80% of them are actually from countries uh, within the Western Hemisphere, but uh, it allows us to take a good grasp on uh, state activity, especially focusing on political targets, NGOs, political opposition, so forth. The second and third uh, major sources are not exactly the, the actions of the states, the, the nation state sponsored attacks but the potential capability. So the fact that states are buying, that are acquiring uh, offensive solutions, and we got that from uh, major leaks from Hacking Team and Gamma Group and Finn Fisher, and also some good open sources out there, such, such as Bugged Planet and the Surveillance Industry Index, uh, even official documents such as uh, reports from uh, exportations from United, United Kingdom, uh, Germany and Switzerland uh, also issue some uh, uh, license to sell spyware. So it was a good, pretty good source for that too. The fourth and fifth sources, we have looking for censorship. Several uh, different organizations do look up that on the online. Uh, we're going to 
cover them up uh, uh, in the next slides. And the fifth one is transparency reports, which is pretty interesting because it's uh, relatively new. Uh, it is started with the Snowden revelations, where companies interested in increase their accountability, starting to publish the, the government requests of content and removal. So we have a pretty interesting view on how governments uh, are behaving towards uh, that online information. Okay, jumping into some of the outcomes, we're gonna focus first on what we have seen from state uh, cyber attacks, state sponsored cyber attacks. And 55% of the documents led to some level of attribution. We had a pickle when we needed to uh, group the documents among uh, actors, among uh, campaigns, because vendors tend to have a branding of their own. Some call them bears, some call APT yada yada, and then we had to group it so we wouldn't count twice for the same attack, for instance. But that led us to 119 uh, state-sponsored attacks, which is a lot. And when we looked for the, the countries, when the attribution allowed that, we found out uh, 19 different countries with a state-sponsored APT, Advanced Persistent Threat. And you get a picture like that. Uh, the map shows us, of course, the traditional ones, the Russia, US, Israel, etc. But we also get to see some different countries, such as Ethiopia, Lebanon, Syria, Pakistan, countries that you might not think that had these capabilities. So it's interesting to see uh, how diffuse it is. And when we look at the types of targets, it's interesting to notice also that in 46 cases, we had political targets. And I mean by political targets, I mean opposition parties, I mean NGOs, uh, independent media outlets. So it's rather interesting to see that it's the first place, even uh, ahead of uh, military, governmental, or diplomatic targets. So it's pretty interesting to see that uh, we have an evidence that attacks are being uh, uh, directed to civil society, to groups, to political interests, and not exactly interstate uh, affairs. Jumping to the idea of a potential capabilities, the second layer, we should say, we found 71 countries that acquired some solutions. Uh, 41 of them, we couldn't even, we could identify the user or buyer. In 19 cases, the buyer was military or an intelligence agency, which is interesting because they tend to operate uh, with less uh, oversight from judicial branch, for instance. And in 20 cases, we see uh, an application of uh, backup policies. Well, why not you buy from multiple providers? Maybe one of them won't work, so you have another one. Uh, that's the picture of what we see from the distribution of 71 countries uh, and the major providers that we uh, identify. Uh, interesting to notice that not all of these are providers of uh, offensive solution. We have an interesting report from Citizen Lab that covers the use of applications from Procera in Turkey and Syria uh, for the use of surveillance uh, in those countries, which is really interesting. And narrowing down the countries that we identify to be military or intelligence agency users and the others that we didn't know, we couldn't uh, uh, see who, who actually bought it, we have this, this map. And when we select the user buyers from military intel and, and intelligent community, we get these 19 countries. You get to see that a lot of uh, Middle Eastern countries, North of Africa and South uh, Southeast Asian countries are there, which is kind of a trend across our data. Uh, here is the picture considering the multiple providers from red to green. We see in red the, the countries that acquired four solutions and in orange the three, yellow two, and the green just a single solution. Uh, we had also, it's easier to see here in the graph, you can see that Southeast Asia and Middle East 
<coughs> Sorry about that. Uh, are the countries, the, are the regions which have countries with most, uh, actually, multiple providers. So it's a, it's a kind of a trend. It's not a surprise. So uh, we see this repeated over and over in our data. And on the right, of course, you see the user buyers from a category perspective. When we jumped into the idea of censorships, uh, a censorship and the uh, blocking of content, we also found uh, 40 countries with some evidence of online censorship and 42 countries with some level of internet shutdown. Uh, curious to see that in almost 75% of the cases, the shutdown reached a uh, national level, which is remarkable if you think about it. And in 57 countries, they were in different uh, methodologies, in different uh, sources. So reinforce the idea that those countries actually are engaging in this kind of uh, big brotherish behavior. Uh, here's, uh, I'm not gonna go into the methodology of each one of the sources, but I'm gonna go pass through the, the, the sources. Here is UNI, Open Observatory of Network Interference. I encourage you to go online and, and check out their methodology. Uh, very, very oriented to Asian and Middle Eastern countries. Uh, the Freedom House, Freedom of the Net report, uh, which is yearly report where the Freedom House evaluates uh, freedom of uh, users online. Uh, it goes from uh, free to partly free to not free. So yellow to red means that you're not doing a very good job. Similar to that, the Web Foundation and Web Index. The Web Index goes from one to, to zero to one. So you see from light green to, to red. The same goes for the Open Net Initiative. Uh, it's a citizen lab uh, project, a little bit older, but uh, remains remains uh, valid because it reinforces the, the, some of the perceptions, some of the evidence that we collected prior to that. And here, the accessnow.org shutdown tracker. You only see India on the red here because in the last three years, India reported over 150 uh, shutdowns, and all the other countries actually reported less than 30. So it's kind of a, a of a of a outsider here, an outlier here. In Brazil, we had our share of, of internet blocking. It's worth uh, sharing with you guys. It was actually two two different decisions from uh, two different judges, uh, where they wanted the the WhatsApp uh, cellular app to wiretap some drug dealers. And when WhatsApp said it couldn't be done because technically it couldn't be done, uh, the content wasn't uh, at their disposal, uh, the judge thought it might convince WhatsApp to do something about it by blocking the app uh, nationwide. So that happened for two times, two or three days, until eventually a higher court overruled the, the first decision. Well, that's Brazil, you know, you don't need a dictator to do these kind of things, you get our judges doing it, but never mind. <laughs> On the second, thank you. On the, on the right, you see the countries that appeared uh, in multiple sources, and you see that same trend where Southeast Asian and Middle Eastern and North African countries appeared. Uh, besides Iran and China that you might imagine, Saudi Arabia, Vietnam, Turkey, uh, Ethiopia are countries that are recurring, appearing on the data we collected. And we go finally to idea of uh, transparency reports. It's interesting one. We have already uh, 70, uh, 70 uh, transparency, transparency reports published. Uh, we only uh, actually analyzed 10 of the major providers due to uh, lack of uh, human resources. Uh, but the average for a request to have some data produced was 64%, which is, shows why countries are actually interested in, in demanding that from social media. And overall, 125 countries have already requested information or removal content. So it's a pretty popular way to get information regarding your targets. This 
a map of the concentration of uh, requests, uh, different uh, social media requests, you see that it's much more uh, Western oriented, most likely because most of the social networks have Western users, so uh, I, we attributed the, the result to that. But when we break down to numbers, and we selected uh, five countries. We selected uh, Brazil, India, Mexico, Poland, and Turkey as a representation of different regions. We see a light trend going up, which means uh, these countries have requested more information over the years. But we do see a country uh, stand out, and that's Turkey. And if we check out uh, the numbers only for Turkey, it's interesting to see that going up from 2013 and on, Turkey has uh, really spiked the, the requests. And that coincides to the political crackdown that uh, re-elected President Erdogan. Uh, it's playing out in the country. So maybe this is a, 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 an evidence that cyberspace is actually being used to impose, uh, to, to, to limit uh, civil society. And I draw your attention to the bottom right graph. That's exactly the removal uh, requests that Twitter received. That's a percentage of how many requests were issued by Turkey regarding the whole world, so the, the, the total amount of requests from Twitter. So from 2013 on, uh, Turkey responded for 30, 40, and finally 50% of all removal uh, requests. So it's a... It's a Pretty, uh, pretty big number if you think about a Turkey, uh, 80 million country, maybe 40, 50 million internet users, maybe even less Twitter users. So it's uh, maybe it's a, it's, a, it's a good evidence of state misbehavior uh, towards social media. And while going for now some final remarks, as you guys can see, I really love maps. So. <laughs> This is just uh, the last one where, well, actually not the last one, but one of the last ones where I put all the layers together on cyber uh, capabilities. You see in orange countries with state-sponsored APTs, and then in, uh, in yellow and green countries with intelligence and military capabilities, and in purple countries with law, law enforcement, light green uh, civilian. And you can see it's very diffuse. We can look at and, and think like, Joseph Nye said it's a diffusion of power. It, it really is. Many countries do possess this capability. And when we think about this in a perspective of Internet users, 54% uh, of Internet users actually live in countries that already had state-sponsored attack. And if we scale it up to include intelligence agency, that reach 65%. And if we go full stack, anyone who has some sort of capability, potential one, that's 92%. That's pretty much everyone. And it means we're all in it together. And the second uh, kind of misbehavior that we classified here as censorship and blocking, it's much more oriented towards uh, in, uh, Asia and, and Africa. And you can see that's a strong correlation between uh, censorship and internet shutdowns. We can see 26 countries doing both of the things. And 60 and, and, six, and 56 percent of users online are subject to this. And well, DEFCON this year is talking about 1983 and we are closing into 1984 and the evidence that we brought uh, justifies that we are actually are there, and many of the countries are actually leaving already in 1984. And this is the best place so we can be aware of this and think of creative solutions so we can help them. Uh, and maybe our daily lives doesn't, doesn't reflect really this, this kind of uh, state misbehavior, but we should all be aware that it's out there, it's happening right now, and we should do something about it. I thank you for your patience, thank you for your time. I leave my contacts, please, if you have, Thank you.